Hey everybody, welcome to week six of Colorful Summer Crafts. Today we're going to make this beautiful artichoke candle holder. It's pretty easy and it's actually, it's a kind of a lot of fun to make and I think it looks fantastic. Um, what you're gonna get in your kit, you're going to get an eight ounce canning jar. You're gonna get 35 plastic spoons. Uh, you need to have a hot glue gun and some spray paint. Now we chose a bronzy, brassy kind of paint. You could choose any color. I mean, you could actually make a green one if you really wanted to have a green artichoke and that would be, that would actually be pretty cute too. I will say this, when you do make this, you might wanna get a um, little fake candle tea light to put inside. One, it's, it's actually really deep and it's gonna be hard to light a real candle in there. Um, but two, since this is all plastic and glue and paint, maybe having an actual live flame around it might not be your best plan ever. But you know what? That is up to you. You can also try it, see how it works out. Just be aware that you want to have a little tiny candle down in the bottom, okay? Not a tall taper that's going to melt these spoons. That would be... I don't, I don't want anybody's house to burn down. I've already done that and it was not fun. So we're going to set the jar aside. Get your hot glue gun going. Now, I just realized that mine is a high temperature glue gun, which is actually very dangerous for people like me because I'm very accident prone. Um, so just be careful. Of course, a warm glue gun will work just as well. The other thing that I have that you might not have are these pliers. Now, technically, these are kind of like wire cutters. Um, I looked it up on Amazon. Now the number that is here is 84-027. If you do a search for that, you'll come up with these cutters. They're super handy. I use these to cut everything. I use them to cut skewers, like you'll see in next week's craft. I use them to cut popsicle sticks. Anything that's kind of small, so much easier to use these to cut. Now for your spoons, because we're gonna cut the bowls off all of the spoons. You can use scissors. You could, even, you know, I wouldn't try to snap them. They're not gonna stamp, snap cleanly, but you could use scissors if you're very strong. I am not very strong. So I just use my clippers, put it right underneath the bowl, hold on to both sides. Because if you don't, the bowl goes flying. Or if you're holding the bowl, the handle will go flying. Okay? But it's super easy. You just clip it off. You're gonna have 35 of these spoons to clip. That means you're gonna be left with a whole bunch of handles. These handles, I'm fairly certain, can be recycled. If not, just throw them away, okay? I know, I hate to produce that much waste, but there you go. So again, it's super easy. You just, now I like to have the open part of the clippers toward the bowl. That gives me a little extra room to deal with. Clip, and that's it. Okay, so you're going to do that to all of all 35 of your spoons. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to put all of your spoons in a cardboard box and you're going to spray paint them. Now your spray paint needs to sit 30 minutes to dry, three hours to cure. So, you know, if you do it one, if you do it at night before you go to bed, when you get up in the morning, you'll be all set to do your craft. Probably the clipping and the painting takes the longest amount of time. The other thing, the ring that comes with your with your jar, spray paint that the same, okay? If you don't want to spray paint it the same, that's fine. You could probably figure out some other way to create a stand for it, but this was the easiest way that I could think of. So, you have 35, that means there are five rows of seven around your bottle, around your jar, I mean. Um, so you have 35 spoons. If one of them cracks or breaks, I have a couple extra. You're welcome to come in and pick them up. Um, I might try to throw an extra one in. We'll see what happens. Okay, so we have our jar. I want to come about an inch or so down from the very top of the jar to do my first row. Now the other problem with having a hot glue gun is it is very hot, it takes it a little bit longer to set up. But your first row, you just put a blob of glue and put 
where the handle would go. So it's coming up over the mouth of the jar. And I've got to sit here and wait for a moment while it sets. The nice thing is the longer you go, the easier this actually gets. Um, I can do another one. And these are about lined up. This is not one of those jobs that has to be perfect. I want these guys to be touching. See, these two are going to overlap slightly. That's fine. If you want them to be a little further apart, you can. Uh, seven goes all the way around. Okay. So like I said, I like to hold one in place while I put the next one on. And there's no such thing as too much glue at this point. Okay. Because we want to be sure they stay secure. And you can tell that it's set because the glue gets a little cloudy, whereas when it's still very melty, it's very clear. Okay. Inch, inch and a half down from the top. That'll be good. And like I said, you've got 35 of these bowls. Also, I would only spray the round, the outside of the bowl, not the inside where the soup would go. Only do the back. Because if you do both the inside and the outside, it is going to make, it could make it more flammable. And then admittedly, this is plastic, so you're already kind of not wanting to get flames around it anyway. But, okay, we're at five. but only, you only need to do the back. These spoons are transparent. Oh, okay. Have to overreact, it's fine. Uh, these spoons are transparent, so the glue, the paint really shows up very well on both sides. You could use white spoons if you wanted. I like the clear ones, because that's what the lady in the tutorial did. If you go onto our webpage and you go to Crafts at Home, or not our webpage, our Pinterest page, Pardon me while I say the wrong words. If you go to our Pinterest page, go to Crafts at Home, there's about a 30 second video of a lady doing this. Um, she makes it look super easy and it is actually super easy. Like I said, you could do multicolors, you could do whatever, whatever kind of spray paint you wanna buy. Um, if you're gonna go buy spray paint and you only wanna make one trip to the store, I'm gonna tell you next week, we're gonna need two different colors of spray paint. Um, I use purple, you could use any two colors you want. It's really up to you. Once you see what we're doing next week, you'll understand. Okay, so then I'm gonna come down and the next row is gonna be halfway. So we're gonna get that nice overlap. It's going to cover up, it's gonna go between, I guess is what I'm trying to say here and failing. Um, The first row always seems really subjective to me, but then we get the second row and it just overlays exactly where you want it to go. So we're building up each layer. That's why we start at the top and build our way down. Have all the hot glue around that you need. This is one of those, I really like the hot glue for this. It works so well. And see this little flaw right here? Don't worry about that. If you really want, you can always come back later and touch it up with some more spray paint or when the next spoon overlays, just be sure it covers that up. Also, plants are not perfect in nature, okay? It's never gonna be perfect and that is all right. Okay, so, and that's why you've gotta hold it in place if you do Move a little bit so you can glue and turn and glue and turn and glue and turn. And we might have to wait for a minute while it continues to solidify. Have some music going while you're doing this, but... 
So I did not clip all the spoons for you. I decided that was something that you could definitely do. Um, having little clippers like these around, like I said, super handy for so many other things. I think I bought them for popsicle sticks one time and I've been using them ever since. They just, they're just handy. <laughs> okay, that's set so I can rotate and do my last one on this row. And yes, I am putting a lot of glue. I wanna be sure that it sticks. And since these are not perfect, perfectly flat or anything, I wanna have enough glue that it's gonna stay where I put it. And we give it a moment. Okay, so then we're ready for the next row, and I'm gonna come about, mm, oh, I'm gonna get some more glue, first of all. This does take quite a bit of glue. Do not touch the hot filament, or you will be in a world of hurt. Okay, nobody wants that. We want everybody to be healthy and happy. Okay. This actually surprisingly does not take that long to assemble. The longest, the thing that takes the longest is waiting for your glue to dry. I'm not waiting for your glue to dry, waiting for your paint to dry. Someday I'll learn English and it'll be super awesome. Everybody will be excited that day. All right. So it's about this time when I was making the first one that I was starting to realize that each row you get quite a bit of distance between the bases of your spoons. And I was trying to figure out, okay, what do we do? Because initially I only had 30 spoons per kit, thinking it would be seven times four, which is 28, and then that gave you two extra spoons just in case something broke, which even if the, if the bowl cracks a little bit when you clip it, once you paint it, and keep in mind that the crack is gonna be here at the base, nobody's ever gonna notice it. It's gonna be, it's gonna be nice, okay? But about this time I'm starting to think, oh dear, what do we do? How do we cover up that space? And that's when I remembered that all these jars come with lids. And it would be super easy to just do one more row of spoon bowls. Oh. No. There we go. I'm leaving fingerprints in this. If I ever commit a crime, we'll be able to do, you'll be able to find me from the fingerprints I've left in your artichoke. And I realize, yeah, so I realize if I do one more layer and then I set it on this, not only does it give it a nice stable base, It also uses that ring, so that's less stuff sitting around being wasted. Ooh, only one. Okay. Isn't it cute though? It looks, it really does kind of look like a little bronze or brass artichoke. I think it's gonna look really cool when it's lit up too. I'm not sure, I haven't put a candle in mine yet. So I don't know for a hundred percent sure, but I think it's gonna be super cute. Okay. Did you know that artichokes are in the same family as thistles? So if you're eating an artichoke, you're eating the artichoke hearts, there are little hairs inside that are part of the thistle. I want to say thank you, Mr. Alton Brown, for teaching me that fun fact when he was making artichoke hearts, showing people how to eat them. Apparently, you just melt butter. You like, not roast, you steam them and then peel off the petals and just eat a little bit of the petal that's down there. 
said, I don't really want to eat artichoke hearts, but I, it's neat to know that they're part of the same family that thistles are. It's like corn is also a grass. It's not a grain, it is a grass. And those are your random facts for the day, friends. Do not touch your hot glue gun. It hurts. Okay. The other thing I really like about this is all these little strings that I'm kind of creating, they're all getting buried underneath the spoons. And I like that I can just hold everything in place too while I work. Obviously, it doesn't matter what kind of canning jar you use. You could also use a tin can. You could use a little glass, depending on the size of your container that you're putting the petals around. Maybe you'll use a 16-ouncer, and then you'll use a lot more spoons if you're doing this on your own. It just really depends on what you want to do. Okay. For the last row, I'm actually gonna put glue all the way down on this part, okay? Because this is the tricky part where the spoon's not really resting. Kinda need to have the glue on the bottom since the spoon curls around it, okay? Makes it a little extra grippy, which is nice. It's not gonna slip out of its spot. And it makes this little thing, it's too cute. Sorry guys, I just think it's adorable. And since it's so easy to make, that makes it even more fun to me. Oh, we could make artichokes for everything. Not as cool as pineapples. Now, you could probably put like a green plant sticking out the top and make it look like a pineapple. But another thing that Mr. Brown has taught me is that pineapples were so popular in colonial times that people would rent them for parties. So you, you know, they wouldn't eat them at the party. No, 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 it was just there as a decoration. As humans, we are an unusual species. Okay. Like, yes, this fruit is delicious and good for you. Let's just invite it as a guest to our party. I told my niece that she was less impressed than I thought she should be, but that's okay. I did buy her a shirt that has a pineapple on it, so she'll be welcome at all parties. She's 13. The longer this sits, of course, the more solid the glue becomes and it gets a little easier. Okay. And I'll need one more stick of glue in here just to keep pushing that glue through. I mean, that one hand is very dark, difficult. Okay. And my last petal. Now, the nice thing is it can sit on its own, okay? So it can sit, and if you want to be done with it now, you can be done with it now, all right? That is up to you. That is your call. No judgment regardless. I'll let that sit. What I'm gonna do instead, though, is I'm gonna take my little ring that I painted to match, and carefully, because remember, <laughs> we learned this last year, when you put hot glue on a metal ring, especially a thin metal ring like this, it will heat up, okay? 
So if you're touching it and it starts to heat up, yes, I'm putting a lot of glue on here because I'm not 100% sure where all the contacts are going to be. So I want to be sure that it is secure. Okay. Now, if I had let my paint sit a little bit longer, uh, I think I would have a much shinier finish all around, but I didn't let my paint sit quite long enough. But look, it looks neat when you look inside, and it looks super neat when you look at the outside. Send me pictures of your finished artichokes. I can't wait to see them. It's gonna be so cool. Like I said, you could make it into a pineapple if you put a little green plant inside or you know like a little air plant that would be that would be really cute too but turning it into a light and putting it in your window it's going to welcome everybody to your house all right thank you guys so much and we'll see you next week have a good one hey everybody thank you once again for joining us for our colorful crafts this was week six and the word this week is velvet, V-E-L-V-E-T, velvet. It is our indigo week, which is a little tricky because indigo is both blue and purple. We love it, but we're doing bronze and brass because it looks super cute. Okay, we will see you next week. The word again is velvet. You have a great day and a good, and I hope your holiday was safe.